with uh, politics and diplomacy, with economics and finance, with culture and society, and with science and technology. These four streams have each had three separate sessions, so we have had 12 sessions in all. And of course, none of us could attend all of the parallel sessions, and therefore uh, we thought it would be pertinent at this stage to uh, bring you a report from all four streams so that those who are in one stream can hear what happened in the other streams as well. To do this, we have designated uh, a, a number of our young colleagues here at the Library of Alexandria who uh, would be uh, in a position uh, to uh, report back on each of the four streams. Uh, they were attending each of the sessions, they took notes on each of the sessions, and they are in a position uh, to uh, report back to us, and I will ask them to report each of them in about seven to eight minutes, about two to three minutes per session. Um, as I was telling Heba Rafay, two to three minutes per session multiplied by three, that is between six and nine minutes, so we give you eight minutes. No need to report back on the plenary session since everybody was there and you were all present for that set of discussions which took place. So, uh, I don't know, did you deploy yourselves for a particular reason in this way or, or we can just uh, go every which way we want? Uh, you each have your microphones, and uh, I will start, therefore, with Lemia Ayubi. Please go ahead, Lemia, and report back on the three sessions of your theme. Okay. Uh, I've been reporting on the sessions that relate to economic partnership, the Beyond uh, Oil uh, part Economic Partnership, and the first one. So I'm going to integrate together. Uh, Uh, the Japanese, the Arab-Japanese economic partnership, the part of the Okay. Actually, they started by saying that the Arab world has been going through uh, major reforms, uh, basically the increase in the scarcity of the natural resources and the increased diversity in the industries and the increase in the importance of human resources which actually leads us to search for uh, new ways for cooperation and partnership beyond oil, given that oil is a, a resource that's about to be uh, depleted, and so uh, it's more of a, a usage of a capital rather than a flow of income. Uh, they were saying that the Arabs should look east towards Japan, then the Japan should le at least look back west towards the Middle East as well. Uh, uh, they have started by elaborating on a number of uh, frontiers to ensure the complementary relationship. Mr. Sazaki highlighted uh, more like five or six Parts of them, uh, there was the further expansion in trade. There was promotion of investment in Japan, and they gave some examples like uh, Islamic financing is becoming to be a very trendy issue. And, uh, for example, they gave another example of a Qatari oil company being constructed in Japan as well. Uh, the third frontier was promoting investment in the Arab world. Uh, they gave examples of Japanese acquired acres of virgin land in Egypt and then exporting the, uh, out, uh, the, the raw materials back to Japan and labor-intensive int industries in countries like Egypt and the assembly of car parts. Uh, on the fourth level, there was the advantage of the technology and the transfer of the uh, know-how, particularly in the area of the energy savings with particular concerns on the environmental protection issues and in the engineering field. And uh, Mr. Okabe from Cos uh, Cos Cosmo Oil Company actually was inviting Arabs to join one of the biggest Japanese scholarships offered to young people. He said, he said they offered almost like 4,000 scholarships, 50% uh, of which goes to uh, Chinese and the majority of the rest goes to Koreans, so he was inviting the Arabs, he insisted on that. On the fifth level, there was the human resource development, and they highlighted the importance of uh, the education and the training, which was later discussed in the details in the capacity building, which I'm going to get later. Uh, there was importance for the cultural and information exchange. They, need, they um, stressed on the academic exchange, the real exchange of professors, especially that they said that the basic barriers of the uh, scholarships and the like why the Arabs are not participating because basically the teaching language is in Japanese. Uh, they're saying we should establish specialized councils to unify the transfer of Arab concepts and definitions to Japanese and the other way around. 
And finally, they encourage a proper investment climate where uh, the private sector should engage with the government and the NGOs. Uh, they emphasize on the importance of having a follow-up committee uh, or a follow-up mechanism, which could be like uh, round tables, for example, or uh, somebody suggested, I guess, was from Yemen, we suggested of building some, a number of councils, specialized councils, to be formed under the umbrella of the Arab League and the general secretariat uh, to uh, ensure the achievement of the initiatives to be done. Uh, Okabe concluded his speech saying, if I might quote him, looking east is the catchphrase for this conference, but allow me to add another phrase, touch Japan. And for the Japanese world, I'm saying, look to the Middle East and touch the Arabs. Uh, the third session was the capacity building session. They were saying that, uh, yes, the economic reform and the economic partnership is very important, but before we do that, we should build the Arab potential. Uh, this can be done uh, through better education and uh, through uh, making the best use of the field experience or training programs. Uh, when we say that, uh, it comes to our mind a lot of the Japanese experience in the field, tot total quality management, continuous improvement, and other relative programs. Uh, Mr. Uh, Helmi offered us an example of the Industrial Modernization Center in Egypt, where uh, the Japanese have offered so much help and they were trying to open doors. We just open an open up question is that we should uh, find actually a common ground as much as we benefit from the Japanese, we should have the Japanese benefit from us, we should try to realize our full potential. That was all, thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone from the floor wishes to uh, add anything to this report? Yes, please. A few microphone right next to you, if you can just step to the microphone there. Uh, if I may recall, I think that we mentioned that. Ah, uh, okay. طيب أنا من اليمن واسمي أمل باشا أنا أفتكر إنه تكلمنا في الـ capacity building الـ session بأنه التعاون والتنسيق ما بين المنظمات منظمات المجتمع المدني العربية واليابانية يكاد يكون منعدما واقترحنا كيف يمكن لهذه العلاقة أن تتأسس ولكن أنا لم أذكر أن تكون هذه تحت مظلة الجامعة العربية إلا إذا كان ذكر هذا في, في, في السابق لكن في الكاباسيتي بيلدينج أنت لم تذكري أنه تم التأكيد على هذا الموضوع أوكي؟ بس شكرا anybody else تفضل باشا فايز تفضل التليفون جنب الميكروفون جنبك أوكي Thank you very much Your Excellency Mr. Ismail I might have missed the point, but yeah. uh, in the... Uh, please identify yourself because it's yeah. being recorded. Uh, my name is Mahmoud Faiz. I'm from uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, on the session of Beyond Oil, I might have missed uh, a point. Maybe I didn't hear it. But uh, there were some uh, uh, very uh, beautiful thoughts about Beyond Oil. Uh, I remember Mr. Jamali and uh, talking about uh, uh, Beyond Oil, After Oil, uh, when he said it's um, like oil is depletable, might be depletable after 400 years, so to speak, uh, that uh, uh, oil producing countries should uh, look into the matter of uh, building infrastructure and uh, human capital building. I don't know if I missed that point or did you include it? It was, if I might say, if it was a part he was saying where. Uh, the country given that we're running out, we're going to run out of oil because oil actually should not consider the sales of oil as income. We should consider this rather as capital that's being depleted. And accordingly, the income that's flowing us from oil, we should rather invest it in human and infrastructure. If you covered Back that. in maybe, infrastructure, maybe, yes. Maybe I'm sure, no, I didn't mention the infrastructure part. Thank, thank you. you. Infrastructure. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. We'll move to the next. Uh, if somebody else. Just a nomenclature. There's no way I would have said oil producing countries, oil extracting countries. They are oil exporting countries, but they definitely did not produce the oil. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you. Nam? Somebody else? No? 
Okay, let us move on. Then I uh, will ask Ghada uh, Al uh, Khayat to uh, take up the uh, uh, next set of sessions, please. Okay, so the, the theme I'll be covering is the, the politics theme, and it occurred in three sessions uh, advancing relations to a higher plateau, the Middle East uh, peace process, and the third one was the agenda for modernization and reform. In the first session, there was, uh, I would say, a, a common consensus that the major issue to be discussed is the Palestine and uh, Iraqi issues. And uh, Japan uh, confirmed they're being concerned about peace in this region uh, uh, and that it might uh, be of a negative effect on their country. So they uh, admitted being concerned by this. And there was uh, a presentation on different uh, types of support that were uh, presented to the Palestinian people, uh, especially on the health care support, human development, and other financial uh, supports. In this same session, uh, the, dis the discussion uh, uh, was around the issue of international legitimacy too. And uh, it was a very big problem uh, that was identified, and we, with, we, we know it all maybe, but there was no solution in the session for it. The issue of America and Israel being above the international law. And uh, the Japanese side was asked, to, because of the Japanese standing in the international community and the good relations they have with both sides, whether the U.S., uh, or the Israeli side, they were asked to play the, uh, the, the role of a good friend of giving the proper advice to both sides. Japanese uh, people, the Japanese government has the merit of no negative asset with uh, Arab countries, no prejudice against Islam and close relation with the U.S. and no problems with Jews, so they can do all this. However, there, are, there is a problem of some lacking contacts with, uh, the, in the region. There is the problem of the Japan not being a member of the Security Council and uh, the good terms with the United States might be uh, constrained on contradicting the U.S. foreign policy. Uh, the issue of possessing nuclear weapons was agreed upon as uh, something that Japan wouldn't promote, nor the Arab uh, region, and uh, Japan was uh, asked to take a, a clear position. I'm actually taking the wording of some of the speakers, a clear position uh, regarding this issue, disarmament of uh, nuclear disarmament in the Middle East region. Uh, economic relations with Japan were mentioned to be as good, but we hope for more relations, and uh, uh, economic relations were stated as an important part of our partnership with the East, however, a, polit a, a politics role should be played. Uh, on one hand, Japan was asked to be aggressive and effective in the international arena, but on another hand, some of the speakers uh, brought up to the table an important uh, uh, remark of the United States being the only uh, jeune premier and the star in the international arena, and all other countries, including Japan, uh, are only compars. I'm taking the wording of some of the speakers. But whether this is true or not, and uh, uh, still there is a role to be played with uh, Japan to make uh, their intervention more uh, aggressive and effective. Um, the second Another important in intervention about the relations between Japan and the East was the, and the importance of this very event is the diversity this is promoting and making people actually looking East, West, South, and East. The second theme that occurred this morning on the peace process uh, emphasized the role Japan is playing towards the peace process and all aids and support they are giving to the Palestinian cause. Uh, the, we're very much uh, impressed and acknowledge what Japan did in this regard, but there were efforts 
uh, toward this peace process that were going on uh, for more than 30 years. And maybe Japan would be having an important role in implementing this uh, piece. It's the implementation that has some uh, problems. And this brought to the discussion the coming, uh, the future meeting of Annapolis, where people have some doubts of the success of this event. But what's really important and was mentioned in these discussions is that the Japanese side has a, a, key, uh, a key component that can be played or presented by the Japanese side is in empowering Mahmoud Abbas in the negotiation process. So uh, the implementation process, uh, the implementation issue appears to be very, very important. And uh, as I said, there were doubts uh, around the success of this uh, meeting. So Japanese, again, are asked a genuine position towards the peace process. Uh, the valuable assistance is, however, uh, very much appreciated, as I, I said, the valuable economic, financial, healthcare, and human development assistance offered by uh, the Japanese side to uh, Palestine. Uh, some of the concerns that came up to the, into the discussion uh, around this issue, the Palestinian state, is the Israeli uh, need for the creation of, uh, of a Jewish state, which makes things very uh, problematic, and it will actually contribute neg negatively to the peace process in the region. A question that was asked to the Japanese side in one of the discussions, and I leave it open as it uh, was in the discussion, what are the mechanisms of exerting pressure on the U.S. in order to make them posit may, may take a favorable role in this world towards the Arab world? Now I come to the last uh, presentation, the last theme of this, morning, uh, the, this afternoon, and it was discussing the agenda for modernization and reform. Very interesting issues were discussed. A key problem facing modernization of, and reform is the uh, Arab identity, the, the problem of the identity of the Arab and their relation to the other world. How do they uh, perceive themselves and how do they perceive the others and their the relation with the others? Until this problem is resolved, modernization and reform issues may, be, may take a very long time. And this actually, uh, speaking of identity, this incorporates the uh, religious discourse that need uh, real improvement. Another issue that was uh, highlighted in the reform session, and uh, this was really advanced uh, very brilliantly with the uh, ambassador and minister at Telawi, is the method. If we want really re re uh, reform and modernization initiatives, it's not about the success, it's about the maintenance and sustainability of the efforts. Uh, we had an interesting speech about the former Minister of Defense, the Japanese former Minister of Defense, and she studied at Cairo University, and she told us that in the year 1864, a group of 34 samurais came and visited Egypt, and they learned a lot from our locomotives and from the Egyptian railroad system. So uh, why did this fail? Why don't we have this anymore? And we're speaking of the 1864 year. It's because of the sustainability of the efforts that we lack. So we have to import and to get inspired of lots of methods in the, Egypt, in the Japanese uh, management and reform initiatives. The tourism sector as a third vehicle for the reform and modernization uh, initiatives was identified as a very, very fast growing industry, as an industry that would be, help all reform and uh, modernization uh, initiatives and would enable people to get closer to each other and know uh, the cultures of one another and would also initiate more cooperations um, between the Japanese and uh, Egyptian side. 
Uh, last but not least, uh, some interesting concepts came into the discussion and some questions remain unsolved. Globalization is an important concept advanced by the Japanese where we have to adopt and follow when we turn east, west, south, or whatever direction. So we have to go global while keeping our uh, identity features and cultural specificities. Uh, a question raised about the relation between modernization and reform. Does one lead to the other and which leads to which? Uh, the issue of the religion and tolerance among religions is an important factor that made Japan succeed and their ability to solve conflicts and to maintain and to carry on uh, effective uh, negotiations, win-win negotiations. Finally, and this actually wrapped up the, the, the last session, uh, if we want to go further, we have to have a vision of what we uh, have to do, uh, what is actually the picture that we're seeing for our nations in the coming years. Futuristic studies are of great importance and many scientific approaches. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, comments from anyone about this uh, group of session, Dr. Mochi? Oh, thank you very much. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, no. All right. Oh, thank you very much indeed uh, for your uh, summarization and the comment to, to the discussion done in the first session of the political diplomacy. And two points uh, added especially for me a one is about uh, our plan, Japanese plan, about uh, peace and prosperity corridor. Uh, we mentioned and uh, we discussed uh, what is the corridor of peace and prosperity. This is a part of Japanese engagement, direct engagement in the Middle Eastern peace process. And this idea was uh, open under the auspice of pl former Prime Minister Koizumi and in the continuation of his effort, Mr. Abe, uh, the former Prime Minister, also joined and uh, 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 advanced the idea. And actually, uh, in the summer, uh, former Foreign Minister, foreign minister uh, Mr. Aso, came to Palestine to advance this subject. And this idea was one of the indispensable part for us to realize the Middle Eastern peace. So this one is important for the discussion during our session. The second is about our anxiety about the threat, threat for the Middle Eastern peace and at the same time the Northeast Asian peace. peace. That means Japanese anxiety of North Korean and Iranian axis uh, Iranian cooperation to, uh, to develop nuclear weapons, atomic nucleus. This threat is not only uh, important for the Middle East, but also for Japan in the East Asia too. So this atomic nucleus is not to be permitted in any case, not only in the Middle East, but also in the East Asia. We actually he mentioned this threat in the session, and Japanese anxieties are clearly and explicitly mentioned. And everyone, everyone, everyone present there well aware of Japanese anxieties about this problem. So nuclear proliferation is very important, not only for the Middle East and the Arabic world, but also for the rest of the world. Especially, uh, that means not only uh, about the tension between the West and Iran, but also it's important not for nuclear proliferation, nuclear dissipation. This is very important for us to argue. So finally, I again try to confirm Japanese anxieties are mentioned. Uh, in this case, and everyone became 
well aware of Japanese anxieties in the Middle East about this nuclear proliferation. It's all. Thank you very much for this uh, very thoughtful addition. Very grateful. Uh, Ambassador Walid Abdel Nasser, please. Thank you, Dr. Swagedin, and we'd like to congratulate you and uh, your team for this uh, very successful uh, conference. We're not just finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's about. Uh, but I have just uh, uh, some comments on the third panel uh, that uh, was made uh, by uh, Ms. Gadal Khayat about the uh, modernization and reform, just to complete the picture. Uh, actually, there was a, a reference there that the process of... Uh, of um, uh, learning from the other is a mutual process. I mean, this was emphasized by both the Arab and the Japanese uh, speakers. So I think this is important to highlight at one point that it's a mutual process between both uh, sides. And then the other point is about the fact that uh, there was a reference to the fact that a uh, reform process in the Arab world started many years ago. I mean, it's not, uh, you know, a recent process. It started maybe in some countries 30 or 35 uh, years ago. And there was also uh, the question of the common values between Japan and the Arab world, and this could be, serve as basis for uh, future uh, cooperation and model building in both cases. Uh, as far, if you allow me, as far as the uh, one, one of the points raised by Professor Yamauchi is concerned about the nuclear uh, matter, I think that it would be maybe more advisable to uh, draft it in a sort of a general language, because if we go on, uh, specifying ta uh, certain countries, probably this would be controversial and uh, we may not reach at an, an agreed outcome, but if a general language about nuclear disarmament both in both regions, I think that could be satisfactory and to both sides. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Srakitin. Thank you very much. And my name is Hala Gad. I'm representing the League of Arab States in this conference. Uh, well, actually, uh, just a, a very little remark, Ms. Khayyat, uh, in the uh, session that was talking about how to advance relations to a higher plateau between e Japan and the Arab world. Actually, we appreciated very much the remarks made by Ambassador Suto, uh, ex-ambassador of Japan to Egypt. Uh, he actually suggested, uh, he made a very, very, very effective proposals uh, to the session. I would like to mention the most important one, which was uh, the first time we hear a Japanese uh, actually suggesting this, which was the creation of uh, a forum of cooperation between the Arab League and Japan, and he described this as a very important step. And I would like to record this uh, in the report because it's very important that we have this suggestion in our side. Thank you very much. It's important that you should implement it, not record it. It's up to you in the Arab League to work with Japan to implement it. Yes, this is what we're trying to do, sir. This comes in the, in the, in the, within the efforts that the Arab League is making. So this is the first time to hear this from Japan. So thank you. Thank you. Anybody else on this stream? This track, all right. Can I answer for yes. a second, Dr. Saragadzi? Well, there, no. there weren't questions, they were adding. No, they were adding, yes, but I, I, just to say, I want to say something, uh, since we're adding because we were uh, confined with time. But actually, uh, uh, something interesting that was added in this remark since uh, in, this, uh, in one of the sessions is this was the first Arab initiative towards the East. There was, b before, there were uh, conferences and uh, discussions between both Arab and Japanese uh, sides, but this was the first Arab initiative, and some mentioned that it was, uh, for, for them, it uh, seems very promising, and they, they have hopes this uh, concludes so interesting stuff. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, next track is uh, the uh, culture and society and Heba Rafai. Thank you, Dr. Ismail. Uh, yes, I'll be reporting on the sessions which uh, dealt with culture and society. The first uh, one of these is entitled Globalization and its Effects on Culture and Society and Education, the Phenomena, Perception and Responses. We had uh, three dis discussion leaders, including Ahmed al-Sheikh, Tamutsu Aoki, and Yoshiko Ashiwa. 
and I hope I'm uh, pronouncing these names correctly, and it was moderated by Her Excellency Rawiya Saud al -Busiri. There were three main areas in this session which, uh, which were highlighted, and I'd like just to uh, group the comments under each one of these areas. The first was globalization and culture. It was noted that westernization brought many uh, principles, including Christianity and Marxism, to Japan. Um, however, Japan accepted what it liked and rejected what it didn't. And this is one of the main factors of Japan's success. Also that the IT revolution is one of the main drivers of global, uh, globalization. Therefore, there is a mixed culture which is now growing and uh, different foreign cultures are being processed into the Japanese culture, creating a new Japanese culture. And it's important to note that globalization is different from modernization as that it fragments the society and the cultures throughout the world. Therefore, that has a negative legacy which should not be overlooked. Uh, the backbone of cultures may be destroyed and once it's destroyed, only fragments remain. And unfortunately, modernity's direction is not very clear. Uh, some saw that globalization was actually targeting national cultures. At the same time, we should correct the school curricula here in the Arab world and perhaps also in Japan, but more so here, uh, in order to establish a sense of reform, but which is not a part of any foreign agenda. The Japanese speakers commented that, in fact, they are very greedy when it comes to culture and that Japan has accepted many cultural things from other countries, and uh, they wanted to accept the good parts of those cultures, and they did not discriminate or say this is bad just because it comes from the West. We also need to understand the difference between globalization and Americanization. Scientific advancement must not incorporate emotions coming from the hegemony of the West. Globalization is about human development in various terms, and people have no chance but to be a part of this globalization, as it is a natural result of time and how we define our current era. And the use of Western technology has been acquired and learned in Japan, but they did not again try to absorb the philosophy or the religion that came along with it. And although fast food and, uh, has been heavily acquired in Japan and also in the Arab world, it was important to note that also Japanese culture was exported in the form of sushi, for example, in various places around the world, as well as manga and uh, animation, so it is multipolar. The second area was with regards to language, and there was a, a lot of debate reg with regards why we are using English as the official language of this conference. Um, it was believed that this is an invisible partner between us by using English. This is an Arab-Japan conference, and therefore we should be using Arabic and Japanese. The Japanese did, also, um, did highlight, though, that the Arab world were at an advantage, as Arabic was more widely used than Japanese. However, if language is a barrier, then we must do more to learn each other's languages and encourage the translations of our books or even through the medium of cinema. Unfortunately, not much exists about Japan in Arabic, and Japanese society has not traditionally been very concerned with the Middle East. Finally, the Arab-Japan similarities. We need to bridge relations between J Japan and the Arab nations. And if parts of our lives are being integrated into globalization, then we need to share these experiences. We have spoken much about the West, and it's time to go East. The West is in a real crisis in ethics as they focus on materialism. And in the East, we both believe in a balance between the spiritual and the material. And this is a common factor which was highlighted between us. The Arabs alone cannot face the West, and therefore we need to be unified. And perhaps the Japan-American dialogue has uh, more experience, while the Arabs perhaps more experience with Europe. And so we can benefit each other. It was mentioned that Western civilization or criminalization should not be overlooked. And therefore we should look at this common enemy or take a stance against this enemy together. <coughs> and then finally, uh, technology was the basis for both Germany and Japan to rise again following the Second World War, and we need to understand further how they did this. And they have particular experiences, and as Japan does, education is their key factor for success. <coughs> I'll move on to the second session. Um, and that is dealing with a struggling and a turbulent wave of history. Life of individuals is shown in the Arab and Japanese films. We had four distinguished uh, leaders, uh, discussion leaders, Gaballa Ali Gaballa, Mitsuko Sano, Yoji Yamada, and Mustafa Darwish, and it was moderated by Dr. Abdullah. Uh, in summary, it was mentioned that the history of Egypt and Japan through the seventh art of cinema has a great impact on the culture of each citizen. And cinema is based on a picture, and all old civilizations in any part of the world, whether it be east or west, 
have what we may call the image or the picture. And these images were often um, drawn on rocks or on terracotta and are the source of knowledge that we have now about these ancient civilizations. In later stages, this was developed further into calligraphy. An abstract calligraphy, including pictorial image, continued in all forms of life everywhere, including Egypt, Japan, China, and Africa. Often these pictorial images accompanied texts, and they dealt with all, specs, uh, all aspects of life, including the social side, hunting, sport, or even the afterlife. And the pictures are the basic element for the preservation of knowledge. And this was tied in with the cinema, which also uses pictures, only moving pictures, and also, obviously, audio. Um, we had a distinguished director, of course, of the uh, Twilight Sam Samurai, and he discussed uh, the age of the samurai and that it was a feudal system in which Japan was under for 260 years. Um, and then it collapsed and then Japan entered the modern age. In 2003, Hollywood produced The Last Samurai starring Tom Cruise and it was set in Japan before the collapse of this feudal system before modernization. However, a year previously, The Twilight Samurai was actually produced. And it was highlighting or depicting the typical life of people during that feudal age. Um, also, other movements such as kabuki and other arts came out of after this uh, isolation period. What was interestingly noted, however, is that The Last Samurai and another film uh, regarding Japan, such as Memoirs of a Geisha, uh, for the Japanese, they felt that it was a fake depiction of Japan. And interestingly enough, The Last Samurai, didn't e they didn't even go to Japan. It was filmed in New Zealand and in the studio, and they did not want to visit Japan to see what it was like. Also, that the samurais were often depicted as um, the type who are ready to draw out their sword and, and, to, and to slain whom they see. Although during the period of this feudal system over 260 years, there was very few wars or battles. So in fact, the samurais had very few occasions to draw out their swords. Japanese uh, industry, cinema industry was heavily influenced by Hollywood. And so many of their films were influenced by these Americans, as is the same for, for Egypt. However, there was, uh, we needed to note that there needs to be further exchange between Egyptian cinema industry or the Arab industry uh, and uh, Japan. Not many Japanese films are transported over here or exported to the Arab world, and not many are actually shown there. However, there was a, an Arab uh, in film festival, which was uh, funded by the Japan Foundation, in which The Mummy by Shadi Abdus Salam was, uh, was screened. Uh, so therefore, we need to show, we need to produce more of our own films to show our own cultures, to try and get away from the stereotypes which America and Hollywood are, are depicting with the Japanese, I, and I quote, uh, the Japanese with their buck teeth and glasses and camera and the Arab terrorist. We need to make the rest of the world understand what our country stand for and what we stand for as a culture. Um, and one of the ways we can do this is that we're trying to encourage, again, the exchange of cinema. It was expressed that we are experiencing a cultural tsunami. Therefore, we need to preserve our cultures through these images. And some movies are gradually changing ideas on our cultural identities. And there needs to be a special focus on the children and directing something for them. Not necessarily the manga, but film which that can actually preserve the identity of our heritage for the children. And it was also noted finally that a uh, drama series such as Oshin was extremely popular here in Egypt, so there is actually room for further Japanese dramas to come over. I'll try to be quick, Dr. Saragadin, I'm sorry I took some time. The final uh, session dealt with culture exchange towards peace building. And very quickly, we needed to establish a common, set of, uh, common goal to seek ways to tackle issues while promoting the understanding of each other. And this is important to note that it's a process and not just an event. There is particular stress on the children, but not also forgetting the adults. We need to recommend a plan of action to come out of another conference of this sort. The Japan Foundation and the BA, perhaps, can lead the way to this plan of action which is called for. And we need to remember that no civilization is superior to the other. Children from armed conflict areas need this exchange as they are the future of these regions and we need to give them hope for the future. And hopefully Japan can also help in this area. However, this process is not without tensions, which I felt perhaps more acutely in the Arab world than it is in Japan. But Japan is also trying to adjust to this globalization. This led to a rise into debate on human security and the UN document stating that Basically, we need to live in freedom and dignity, free from poverty and despair, free from fear and want, and with the right to fully live in dignity. 
The general perception of the media is that reporters are definitely, uh, de sorry, desperately looking for their scoop, and we need to uh, get away from the CNN style of reporting. The media needs to play a larger role, and one of the ways it has done is with the NHK and Al Jazeera cooperation for the uh, Jazeera Children's Channel. In 2003, the Asia Pacific Broadcasting Union produced a voyage to the future, and this was a pro, uh, this is a program which included countries of the of the Asian uh, countries, and the children gathered together, working towards a common goal, but at the same time understanding each other's cultures. The main issue here was that culture and understanding each other d uh, makes the fear of each other uh, and the mistrust that we may have of the other go away. And this is one of the main reasons or the, one of the main factors to producing uh, peace. However, it's noted that consuming Big Macs or driving Japanese cars shouldn't really influence the appreciation and attachment for one's own culture. And what is exactly culture? It acts as a witness to human inheritance and connects them with their past and provides them choices for their life. And we need to explore the differences in the cities. Maybe many of our modern cities include the same buildings, the same fast food, um, similar fashion, and we need to start to identify the cultures which differentiate each city from the other. Um, we also saw a video from the president of the Japan Foundation, Kazuo Ogura, and he highlighted a couple of examples of how Japan has been helping in the cultural exchange and understanding of one another for peace, and this included uh, efforts in Afghanistan and also in Indonesia. And we also should promote Japanese policies regarding perhaps maternity and natal policies as they have the lowest mortality rate in the world. And finally, um, we were suggesting again a call for the BA to perhaps to take a more active role in this area and try and invite children from each of the Arab countries as well as Japan to come and share experiences with regards crafts and games and sports and foods where they can actually learn from each other and then perhaps promote a peace for our future generations. Thank you. Thank you, Heba. Uh, comments, questions, additions from anyone? Yes, please. Thank you. Ambassador Redder, please go ahead. Thank you. Please identify yourself for the recordings.
Thank you, Dr. Ahmed Khairi. Any other comments or questions on the floor? No. Okay. In that case, let me move to Abir Farooq and science and technology. Um. Hi, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first, I would like to say that I am really delighted to be the reporter of a number of important sessions on the access of science and technology of this uh, big event. Uh, I would like to start by the session titled uh, Innovation and New Models for Cooperation, Water and Other Issues. Uh, the session consists of four speeches and an open discussion. Uh, the key messages that could be drawn from the session are as follows. Uh, first, Japan has already several cooperation activities with a uh, number of developing countries, uh, especially in the area of utilization of remote sensing in post-crisis management, and uh, uh, as well as the Earth Simulator project that is utilized to enhance the credibility of global warming-related studies. Uh, however, there is a need to uh, strengthen cooperation between Japan and Arab countries uh, with benefits for both sides, taking ex uh, successful examples such as the ongoing projects in uh, Morocco on uh, innovation irrigation techniques and the United Arab Emirates on dry land agriculture as positive steps to be built on. Uh, there was a consensus on putting water and agriculture high on the Arab-Japanese cooperation agenda, uh, especially in the area of water uh, desalination uh, and water treatment to help in tackling the global water scarcity uh, problem, uh, especially in an era of climatic changes. Um, other areas that were, were, were mentioned uh, are uh, genome, genome mapping, uh, functional genomics, and genetic engineering uh, as high potential areas for cooperation in order to face the challenges of hunger and poverty. Uh, in order to face the three Fs, food, feed, and fuel challenges, as well as global warming, uh, it was being stressed that uh, we need to dramat dramatically change uh, uh, the way we are thinking, or in other words, to think outside the box, and to focus on innovative ideas such as the, produ the production of fu uh, biofuels from uh, non-traditional resources such as cellulose, algae, and single cell bacteria in order to uh, produce energy in a way that does not affect food uh, security. Uh, last but not least, it, uh, it is a must to take practical steps towards the cooperation between the Arab world and Japan in order to enhance the capacity for tackling future challenges. Um, these were the main messages from the uh, first session. Uh, and uh, uh, now I will, go, I will move to the uh, second session on environment. Uh, the session had one presentation, three speeches, uh, uh, as well as an open discussion. Uh, the focus was on climate change, energy, uh, depletion of natural resources, as, as well as water again. Uh, as a conclusion, it was highlighted that climate change is a real happening phenomenon. And if you don't start acting now, it will be too late to save the humanity. In order to face the climatic changes, um, we have two uh, uh, options. Uh, we have mitigation and adaptation measures. Uh, for the Arab world, with their uh, extremely minor contribution to greenhouse gas emissions, um, adaptation measures are uh, the more relevant um, uh, actions to be taken. Uh, and in this respect, um, uh, there should be a cooperation between Japan and Arab countries in uh, developing adaptation uh, measures, uh, as it depends on new technologies in which Japan is excelling. Uh, talking about climate change, of course, energy was on the focus. Uh, the need for reducing greenhouse gas emissions through energy saving techniques and reliance on renewable resources such as wind and solar energy, as well as uh, uh, reliance on uh, nuclear energy has been strongly emphasized. Um, it, uh, it has been highlighted that Japan has a wide range of energy saving best practices and uh, energy saving t technologies, uh, as well as a good experience in the area of nuclear energy, which the Arab countries could make benefit of. Uh, with respect to water, the utilization of remote sensing techniques and GIS techniques, as well as simulation models for water optimization uh, and uh, investigation of catchment potentials uh, are important areas for cooperation between Arabs and uh, Japanese. Uh, also, water transportation and wastewater reuse for desert cultivation uh, were another areas where the, uh, which could, should be on the focus. Um, again, the need for taking practical steps and developing a more specific research agenda were recommended. Actually, this um, message has been repeated in all the three sessions. Uh, the third session, 
uh, on medical cooperation, uh, uh, consisted of five speeches and uh, also an open discussion. Uh, the key messages drawn from the session are, um, there is an intimate cooperation between Egypt and Japan in uh, health and medical uh, sector, where a hospital for specialized advanced sur surgical intervention for children was donate donated to Egypt. Uh, also, there is another area of cooperation between Egypt, Iraq, and Japan in training 500 uh, uh, doctors and nurses uh, to uh, Iraqi uh, doctors and nurses um, funded by the uh, Japanese government through the JICA. Uh, there was uh, a, a stress on the need for scientific research and student exchange programs um, to be put high on the cooperation agenda. Uh, the Japanese International Cooperation Agency, JICA, um, uh, is f focusing on several areas of cooperation in the Arab countries. However, particular attention is given to medical and health sector. A very successful example, in addition to the projects mentioned before uh, in cooperation with Egypt, uh, has been uh, conducted in Palestine on maternal health care, um, and uh, this project has um, contributed uh, very significantly to uh, improving uh, maternal health care in Palestine. Um, as recommend, co recommended during the session, co cooperation between Japan and the Arab countries in the field of medical and health care should focus on the following areas. Uh, first, telecommunication and robotic surgery, Herbal medicine, where the Arab country, like Japan, relying to an extent on herbal medicine. Pharmaceutical quality control. Uh, this would allow Arab countries to export medicine to Japan and other parts of the world. Uh, joint research project, projects in the area of microbiology, biotechnology, and nanotechnology. And also training and capacity building for nurses. Um, uh, and actually, because these area, areas are a bit uh, broad, uh, uh, there was uh, a stress on the need to uh, uh, develop a more speci specific agenda for cooperation between Egypt and Japan. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Abir. Uh, comments, questions, queries? No? Either the reporting is perfect or people are getting tired. <laughs> perfect. Uh, that's not the, the reporting is perfect. It's not the. <laughs> it's not the people getting. Ah, somebody there. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. لا هو بس قربه كده وانت بتتكلم حطه حطه قريب كده منك في مشاكل كتير ممكن تسبب تلوث لا لا في مشاكل كتير ممكن تسبب تلوث منها على خاص ممكن اليابان والصين لهم خبرة كبيرة جدا المخلفات الزراعية اللي بتخصنا مثلا في مجال الزراعة زي حطب الذرة مثلا قش رز وهم يمكن انتاجهم من قش من الارز مثلا انتاج عالمي برضو بالنسبة لليابان والصين فممكن هم ببعض الخبرات اللي عندهم ما ساهموا كتير في الجزء بتاع استخدام المخلفات ديت ومعالجتها ممكن يساعدونا ببعض التكنيكات اللي كانت اللي هم طبقوها عندهم او بعض الخبرات ينقلوها لأن احنا الإمكانيات عندنا تعتبر شبه معدومة بالنسبة للمجال ده والتطبيق على المجال الواسع، احنا من في في التجارب عندنا في الكليات بنطبق بس بالنسبة لرسائل الماجستير تجارب بسيطة، لكن هناك بيعملوا حاجة زي مصنع كامل أو متكامل لمعالجة المخلفات ديت وإدخالها في علاج الحيوانات وتقليل كميات العلف المستخدم المستورد من الخارج، فده هيعود علينا بالنفع كتير وفي نفس الوقت نقلل كمية الغاز انبعاث ثاني اكسيد الكربون الناتج عن حرق هذه المخلفات. شكرا. Thank you. شكرا. Another area of possible collaboration in the environmental area. Any other comments? Please. و 
while our colleagues get, gets the microphone, I would just like to correct on a question being stated about uh, speaking in English. We're not speaking English. We are speaking the most widely used language in the world, which is English as spoken by non-native speakers. This is the most widely spoken language in the world. We are all non-native speakers uh, here. It is, it is the second language. Go ahead. Please. Yes, please. Uh, um, this is Diyal Ansari from Alexandria University. I would like to suggest one point. We have a lot of scientists have returned already from Japan. I am not aware of many have attended this conference. So I, I, I suggest to get a list to make a database of the scientists from the different fields who returned from Japan. And those should launch the first, I guess, because they can brainstorm many, many great ideas because they have already a lot of knowledge and experience in Japan and how to deal and how they think in Japan. It's very important to get benefit from those uh, wealth in Egypt. So again, I would like to stress, you must have a database of all the scientists who are already in Japan and who return it in Japan. We are very, very pioneer scientists. And I, I, one of the things that I was very sad that I didn't find any one of them here today. I'm not aware of anybody came from Japan here except me today. No, 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 no. no, no. Maybe, uh, several, maybe, including Dr. Farouk Ismail. Of course. Dr. Farouk Ismail was the very first Egyptian yes, to get a PhD in Japan. <laughs> yes, of course. Yes, of course. He's our professor. But anyway, that's my comment. Thank you. Yes, please. It's better maybe to go there. Faisal Hentetti, I'm from Tunisia. Just on medical field, uh, during the session, many highlights the importance of collaboration with uh, Japan's, and Japan's give a lot for health services in Arab countries, and especially in Egypt. But our wish is that collaboration became more important in uh, building research capacity in Arab worlds, and we think the level of such collaboration is still very, very low between Arab countries and Japanese in research in medical field. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Ahmed Abdel Azim, Egypt, Japan Business Council. Actually, uh, I wasn't lucky enough to attend uh, the environment and water session because I was attending economical and financial sessions. There is a point, I don't know if, if it had been raised or not, uh, the point of uh, CO2 emission uh, trade. This is a point uh, very important to Japan as well as to Arab countries. It's a very, it could be a point merged between economic and environment. So I don't know if it had been raised or not, if not, it's a point should be discussed between uh, the attendants because it could be very profitable to Arab countries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any additional comments? Yes, please. In the back. لا عايز يتكلم يتكلم احنا هنا عندنا حريه كلمه دكتور احمد شاوي انت عارف الكلام ده انت مخضرم في مكتبه اسكندريه وتعلم ان احنا هنا بنسمح بحريه الكلمه المطلقه. Excuse me. Just I would like to add, first of all, the report is complete and we are tired, both. <laughs> ah, <laughs> uh, uh, I would like to add that uh, it is preferable not to limit our cooperation with the Japanese uh, friends uh, to technical aspects. Let us uh, exchange views about policies because they were experts in politics the policy and politics of science of can say the social and ethical aspects of science and technology not just you know technical as, as I said in the session the technical and scientific aspects make us answer the question raised by Dr. Adil Biltagi can we make a difference yes we can by means of science and technology but how do we uh, uh, make a difference it is another issue it needs politics, policy, it needs social aspects, many things. Food production in the world is enough, at least so far, to feed all the people. But we have hunger in the world. 
Why? Because we can, but we don't know how. Thank you, Dr. Smiley. Thank you very much. I seem to see people are not tired. They, they want to participate. The uh, gentleman wait. behind you wants to participate. Okay. So one here and then one okay. there, and then we'll see what we do. All right. Who's going? Father. Dr. Arduin, uh, Italo-Egyptian, former diplomat and uh, professor. In the section of cultural exchange toward peace building, we had agreed that we have to begin by little children to make them. So I, I, and so I, I agree also that, that the exchange of culture can begin by the young. The thing that I was asking, why they have closed the, the Japanese consulate in Alexandria? If they have closed it, they can at, at all open it again as a cultural center because to me or also we see that the Japanese has made a very good thing. They have translated the, the book for children in Arabic. Why we don't translate the book, uh, in Ara Arabic book for children in Japanese or also the comics, the comics, uh, Japanese comics are translated in Arabic. Why we don't translate in Japanese also the Egyptian comics? Because if the young have to read, they have to, to speak a language. They don't speak like us English. They are going to speak uh, Japanese and Arabic. How they could understand each other? Well, we did mention a number of times the question of translation. Uh, okay, the gentleman behind Dr. Ahmed Shawi, please. Yes. محمد أنوار رئيس مجموعة شباب من أجل التنمية المجلس المحلي بإسكندرية الحقيقة أنا بس عايز أكمل بقية الكلام اللي قاله الدكتور كمان بالنسبة للشباب بقى إحنا عايزين يكون هناك يعني المفروض من الجانب الياباني وبرضه من الجانب العربي في حتة التبادل التكنولوجي عن طريق المواقع الإلكترونية أنا ما أعرفش مثلا يعني عايز أقول ماذا أعرف أنا عن اليابان أنا عربي شاب عربي ماذا أعرف عن اليابان أو لو أنا مستثمر عربي ماذا أعرف عن اليابان إزاي استثمر المفروض يبقى فيه حد يقول لنا المواقع الرسمية أو الحكومية اليابانية الموجودة اللي هي بتتيح الفرص الاستثمار سواء في اليابان وكمان من ناحية الجامعة العربية تقول لهم المواقع الموجودة أو مجالات الاستثمار الموجودة في الدول العربية المختلفة بالإضافة أن احنا ممكن كمان نشجع تبادل الأفكار الشبابية عن طريق وجود منتدى إلكتروني لتبادل المعلومات ما بين الشباب شكرا شكرا مدام عندك حافظة استثمار كبيرة وعايز تستثمر في اليابان قول لي وأنا أقول لك أني أماكن تحطها في Just for your information the library of Alexandria our website is also in Japanese in case you haven't looked at it, I would urge you to look. You will see that the Library of Alexandria is in Arabic, English, French, and Japanese. And it's there. And uh, yes, madam, please. And then Dr. Kurakao. And then I think we'll wrap up. So we'll give uh, Dr. Kiyoshi Kurakawa the last word after this lady. Thank you. Fadali. Mr. Afaf Mohammed, from the Sudan Jamal Dua Al Arabiya. حقيقي بس كان في نقطة في المجال الصحي أنا ما حضرت ال السيشن ده توطين الصناعات ال الطبية معلوم إنه ال اليابان اختراع الأندسكوب هو اختراع ياباني يعني فريد وطورت اليابان هذه ال الصناعة لل الأندسكوب كابسول وهي من ال من ال الصناعات ال في الطب الحديث النادرة جدا في استكشاف الأمعاء الدقيقة واليابان تنفرد بهذا ال بهذا الاختراع ف. إلى أي مدى ستستطيع اليابان أن توطن الصناعات الطبية الحديثة زي مثلا نقل تجربة الإندسكوب والإندسكوب كابسول للمجال الطبي في العالم العربي ممكن أن نضاف هذا إلى المقترحات في مجال توطين الصناعات الطبية في العالم العربي دكتور كوراكاوا do you think you can assist in transferring some medical industries from there to here I think, in fact, this afternoon we discussed this uh, global health issues and miracles. And I think it depends on the country. I think you have affluent community who has a lot of problems with obesity and diabetes. On the other hand, we have, if you see the global health issues, 
10 million people are dying just for starvation. You know, that's a crazy thing. Mm -hmm. So that we developed uh, from uh, one young uh, sort of Japanese table for two. So I think we are working with some corporate. If you go to the cafeteria of the corporate, there's a sort of table for two marked menu. If you buy it, that's healthy. But 20, 20 cents of this money goes through World Food Program to the developing part of the world to save a kid for one full day. So that kind of program could spread out very nicely without any government help. I think that is a very sort of genuinely creative, innovative idea. So we really like to participate in this kind of thing. Now, if you like uh, high tech, I think also we have to prioritize and also realize 40 million people are suffering from HIV AIDS, 75 percent living in sub-Sahara. Sub so what they need is fundamentals like poverty, like Millennium Village program, that kind of thing. So I think we have to prioritize what you need in each country. And that is the mission of the WHO Commission for Social Determinant of Health. We are working on that right now. Thank you. Thank you. Radli Bishai. Shabab, Shabab, Radli. This conference is named A New Dawn, Arabs Looking East. We Arabs have looked and we saw Japan and we saw a lot of potentials. I'm asking now Dr. Ismail and his group what is next. Don't let us stop there. We have to go ahead. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Very well. Uh, that's an appropriate moment at which to respond and say uh, the delegations that co-sponsored this uh, conference had, uh, have been following this and been drafting a statement. Uh, the Alexandria Statement, the Alexandria Declaration towards a new Japan-Arab partnership. And uh, this is uh, uh, closer to uh, a diplomatic statement. So as a result, it is perhaps less forceful than uh, what some of you may wish. But nevertheless, it does provide, I think, uh, a clear sense of commitment that we want to follow and that we want to pursue. So if there are no more comments, questions, or additions, Dr. Kurakawa, one more? Okay, Dr. Kurakawa, go ahead. Thank you. No, I think perhaps some of you may know I have been working very closely, closely with Ismail and also serving through this uh, Bibliotheca Alexandria, which is a wonderful treasure and uh, heritage of the both West and East civilization. This is the first academy of uh, human history, like 2,400 years ago. Now, now 40 or 50 percent of all the information we get daily basis, is not by written text, not by speeches, but rather by visual input, be it the TV, internet, whatever have you. And visual input has a very powerful influence on kids, you know, like all the people. And there's a very interesting program at MIT called Visualizing Cultures. It's a very interesting problem. You can study that even on yes. internet. And I think I'd like to work uh, through BA here, maybe a course series of visualizing culture, and give that visual impact on heritage, art, music, movies, whatever have you, and give a different sort of perspective. And this MIT program is uh, uh, led by John Dowers, who is a historian, particularly on Japanese history, and also Professor Miyakawa, who is a linguistic professor. And I have been working with these guys. I mean, I think I talked to you. This is a very powerful tool to communicate and share as a sort of value on contemporary technology. Thank you. Thank you indeed. And I, I am glad you raised that MIT uh, Visualizing Culture Program. And also I hope that people here have had a chance to visit the Culturama and other aspects of our work in the Library of Alexandria. We have, that's it. If this is it, we can, I can mention it. Uh, what, please go ahead. 
building on what uh, Dr. Adli said, it was quite uh, clear enough from the early beginning of this conference that we need a mechanism for follow-up, practical rather than diplomatic. You're not going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, at the end of the day, things like that are either going to be intergovernmental, which means that they are diplomatic, or they're going to be uh, inter-people, which means we need volunteers. And if you want something, you do it. I will provide you with the space here in the Arab world, but you do it. It's not somebody sitting back and saying, why hasn't the library done this? Why hasn't the library done that? Why didn't I receive information about this? No, oh, we are all going to be in this together, and we are going to make it happen, and every one of us is going to contribute to make it happen. That's when things will change, and we will have a real mechanism, pragmatic, practical, that will move forward and will do a lot of things. But let me, at this stage, before I move to a concluding statement on the conference, I really need to read to you what the various participants in organizing this conference feel that we have come up with. So I will read that, and I hope that based on this whole discussion, you will find echoes of it. It may not have this specific or that specific proposal in it, but it will have, I think, the bulk of what you want. It says, representatives of governments and members of civil society from Japan and the Arab world met in Alexandria, Egypt on November 20 to 21, 2007 for the Japan Arab Conference with the desire to further strengthen and develop partnership between Japan and the Arab world. The conference was hosted by the Library of Alexandria along with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Egypt and the League of Arab States and in cooperation with the government of Japan. Over 250 leading policymakers, academic, business lead, executives, scientists, artists, representatives of civil society, and others from 17 Arab countries and Japan participated in the conference and discussed a variety of issues of common interest and concern, as well as means to advance cooperation to higher levels. The issues were examined in four tracks, political and diplomatic, economic and financial, cultural and social, and science and technology and environment. The discussions were frank, meaningful, and encouraging. The participants examined a variety of proposals to enhance our ties. At the conclusion of the conference, the participants confirming the importance of strengthening cooperation between Japan and the Arab countries in order to face serious challenges in a complex world adopted the following statement. One, we believe that Japan and the Arab countries, both having long-standing cultures and civilizations, can complement each other in pursuing sustainable development in a globalized world while preserving their unique cultures and traditional values. This is with the recognition of Japan's success in maintaining its rich culture while achieving rapid economic development and taking note of the Arab country's desire for Japan's support and cooperation in current efforts to achieve modernization and reform in the Arab world. Two, while we note with satisfaction the steady development of the bilateral relations between Japan and Arab countries, we have been nurtured mainly in the economic field. We believe that it is time to advance future Japanese-Arab relations to a new level of cooperation involving wider economic relations. Therefore, we discussed possibilities of exploring new domains of economic partnerships in areas such as high technology related investment, IT, telecommunications, nanotechnology, generic pharmacy, etc. The participants addressed various issues concerning renewable energy agreements with agreements to go beyond oil and benefiting from new technologies in this area. Three, we also believe that the heart of any reform and as the basis of economic and social development, 
there is a pressing need to promote human resource development. We agree, therefore, that improvement in the fields of education and occupational training should be placed at the top of the agenda for any modernization and reform effort. With this in mind, we discussed possibilities of increasing education and cultural exchange opportunities between Japan and the Arab world. Four, we concur that climate change is a challenge deeply related to the goal of achieving human security in tandem with economic development for all. In order to achieve this goal, it is of vital importance to develop innovative technologies that will contribute to energy efficiency and conservation. Sharing the same concern over the problem of climate change, we intend to work together to address global warming. Five, we are deeply concerned over the continued conflicts and signs of instability in the Middle East and reaffirm our commitment to work together to achieve peace and stability in this important area of the world. In particular, we underline that ensuring a lasting, just, and comprehensive settlement of the Arab-Israeli conflict is one of the most important tasks of the region, as well as the international community. We note with pleasure Japan's effort to help the Palestinians develop a viable economy of their own through the Corridor for Peace and Prosperity project and welcome Japan's continued active involvement in the Middle East. Six, we welcome the timely holding of the Japan-Arab Conference as our joint effort to further promote mutual understanding and cooperation between Japan and the Arab countries. And seven, building on the fruitful discussions of the conference, we agreed to examine how to maintain momentum created by this conference and to examine the possibility of convening follow-up meetings, including similar conferences in the future. Period, and that is the end of the statement. I take it that we can say, Mr. Nakayama, that it has been adopted by acclamation. I would now move on to uh, a few other things that I have to say. First of all, I uh, have received a number of suggestions, including from Engineer Rauf Kamal, to talk about collaboration on projects that affect the library and the environment, including solar energy. And I'm happy to tell you that we have discussed this and that our Japanese colleagues are exploring ways of helping us with solar energy and with recycling. More importantly, I will remind you that right after this session, immediately after this session, I really invite you to take the time to have a chance to absorb some really beautiful Japanese culture, partly on the unique Japanese flower design, the Ikebana, and also traditional Japanese dance, which will be right next to us in the room next door. I hope you will all go from here to the next row. But now, I myself have, I suppose, uh, uh, the right or the prerogative of uh, the chair of a conference like that to perhaps share with you some of my own reflections and remarks about the rich menu of discussion that we've had in the last few days. First, it seemed to me that we were meeting in a very particular time. Yes, the beginning of a new century. Yes, the time of globalization. But it's also the time of the third global revolution. By that I mean revolutions that really affect the entire human race. Revolutions that affect the entire planet. And there were only two before our third one. The first of these, which was launched from right here, the Arab world, partly in Iraq, partly in Egypt, and partly in the Levant. It was the agricultural revolution. In the agricultural revolution, some 10,000 years ago, the domestication of plants allowed people, in fact, to create a surplus 
and to settle human society and to generate civilizations, whether in Mesopotamia or in the Levant or here in the Nile. These are some of the oldest civilizations, as we saw also in other parts of the world emerging in China. But it was very much in the East and not in the West that that first revolution came from. And thus, the first fruits of civilization were here in the East. And we have to be reminded that even today, even when we speak of how little agriculture accounts in the economies of the advanced world, we have to be reminded that every one of us, every one of us on this planet are here as the guests of the green plants and those who tend them who are the farmers. If they did not produce the food surplus, there would be no cities. If they did not produce the dairy, the food, etc., there would be no civilization. And that was the first global revolution. The second one very much came from Europe, and that was the Industrial Revolution. And in the Industrial Revolution, we have the second broad transformation, a transformation in which we witness for the first time a dislocation between the relationship of a human being and the product of their work. The human being becomes a worker, a cog in a big machine that produces a collective work. The division of labor creates a new form of relation. Geographic mobility takes place. Products travel around the world. Commerce takes a new dimension. And the mass production of wealth generates at first not only massive urbanization, but also enormous social inequities. And we must not forget these enormous social inequities. Read what was written about Oliver Twist. Read worse if you want to really have your heart torn apart, the conditions of children in the cities of the West in the late 19th century. And learn that the first law to protect the rights of children was actually actively pursued by the British Society for the Protection of Animals there was a society for the protection of animals before there was a society for the protection of children or the notion of children's rights. And it was they, in fact, who said if we can legislate to protect our pets and our animals, surely we must be concerned about the conditions of child labor. Remember Oliver Twist, remember all those terrible stories that we know. But out of that came a social transformation well-being and welfare on a scale that had not been witnessed before. But it was accompanied regretfully by a period of dramatic expansion where Western forces confronted the rest of the world and actually dominated the rest of the world for the remaining 400 years or so. And we see this everywhere. So the second great global revolution was the Industrial Revolution. Now, Literally, at the end of the 20th century, we have come to the beginning of the third global revolution, which is the knowledge and information revolution. The revolution made possible by information and communications technology on a scale that was unimaginable some time ago. And the birth pangs that laid the groundwork for that were remarkable. The 20th century, was a century of warfare and destruction, but, but it was also a century of emancipation. We started the century with women not having the vote, children not having rights, racism being rampant, colonialism being accepted, and gradually after massive bloodshed and lots of sacrifice, we arrived at the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, at a system of international laws, at a concern for the rights of children, minorities, and others. 
and women participating in political activities, gender equality, all of these values have now found their way around the world. And as we move forward, we are struck that the remnants of the colonial period and the second revolution are with us in the beginnings of the third. And thus, the theme that has emerged more than once during this discussion, the theme of modernization without westernization, comes to the fore. Why are we concerned about that question? Because we have suffered the direct effects of Western colonialism, Western expansion, and the seeming invincibility of a Western cultural model that would impose itself wherever it went, and in so doing, destroy the unique features of the cultures where it exists. And yet, and yet, we see that in the hands of artists who are always more sensitive than the general public, all of us owe the artists this enormous appreciation. Artists show us, as we saw in the films of Yamada and Shadi Abdel Salam, artists show us that not only is it a societal transformation as a whole, but it's a profoundly human transformation. That for every person, the question of choice comes forward at a time of change and transformation. What kind of a person are we going to be and what kind of a world do we want to have and how much are we willing to contribute to make that world the way we want it to be? In all times, we live through difficulties and in turbulent times, as those that were captured in the two films, turbulent times just preceding the Meiji Restoration in Japan at the time of the Twilight Samurai, or for that matter, turbulent times uh, in the beginning of the Egyptianization of authority captured in the film of Sharia Abdel Salam, questions of core values are put forward. And what is important in all of this is that there's a difference between the political activities that are occurring, the political change that may or may not be occurring in a country, and the deep currents that affect more profoundly society, culture, and identity. How do we say this? Well, think of the oceans. Think of the oceans. And on the surface of the oceans, you have waves, and you have winds, and you have storms, and ships can be capsized and wrecked, and people can die. But we also know that at the end of the day, these storms, although significant for the particular people who are caught in them, are not important. It is the deep currents of the ocean, like the Gulf Stream, that changes the entire climate of the planet. And these deep currents are not seen and may in fact be going in opposite directions to the swells and the storms that are on the surface. And so is it with our societies today, precisely in this moment of globalization, transformation and change. Yes, there are political upheavals, there are difficulties, there are all sorts of things, but it is the profound currents of thought that attitudinal change that will transform these societies. And for the first time, we, all of us citizens, feel that we are citizens of this planet, we are responsible for its environment, and we are responsible to maintain values, values that we have adopted and grown up with, values of human rights and equality, values of mutual respect, values that see in diversity a richness and not a threat. And it is this, therefore, that will help create a new paradigm a multifaceted and multi-tiered paradigm that has really come up in the four tracks of the discussions that we have pursued. We talked in politics and diplomacy of changes, of recognizing Japan's role in the world and how it should change. We cannot continue with a system that was designed to reflect the reality of the end of the Second World War. Japan must take its rightful place, but so must other countries. And we have to recognize also, 
as they would say, that uh, our European friends would say, a variable geometry that links different countries together on different issues. And as we seek this multiplicity of links and, 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 and cross uh, 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 fertilization, we also recognize that in the Arab world we have enormous differences. There are at least three different Arab worlds or Arab realities. We share a common language, a common heritage, a common affinity. We feel part of the same uh, uh, culture. We link through the same organization as the Arab League. But there are the rich oil exporters who have a reality that is different from the middle income countries and that is different from the poorest countries such as Somalia, Djibouti, Mauritania, etc. We have different realities in the Arab world and the complexity therefore of the relationships between Arabs as well as between the Arab world and Japan has to be recognized in a world where we can function and promote different forms of collaboration. As we move together beyond oil to new possibilities, as we seek to go beyond trade towards new partnerships, we have to recognize the profound transformations that are going on globally, regionally, and locally, and find the best fit that we can. And this is why meetings are important, dialogue is important, culture is important. It creates the framework within which we understand each other. It creates the climate within which we can get to trust each other. We need a discourse that is free of fear and mistrust. We need a discourse that is based on self-confidence. We need a discourse that recognizes that the new realities of the internet, communication, and virtual reality, Facebook and other means of communication is not just for the young, it is for the future. And for us, therefore, we have to find a way of taking an attitude towards that that is different. More than once we mentioned the enormous success of Japan in modernization without westernization both in the 19th century and again after the Second World War. But perhaps we did not mention enough part of our own heritage, the Arab and Muslim heritage. And let me read you the difference that occurred when our forefathers in this part of the world carried forth the torch of learning and science for over eight centuries at a time when Europe was in the so-called Dark Ages and where Japan had not yet fully blossomed into what it is. Listen to the words of Ibn Nafis, a medical doctor who practiced here in Egypt at the time. And he says about accepting the contrarian view he says, when hearing something unusual, do not preemptively reject it, for that would be folly. The Arabic word is taish. That would be folly. Indeed, horrible things may be true, and familiar and praised things may prove to be lies, for truth is truth unto itself, not because many people say it is. This is an remarkably tolerant, open point of view being expressed by a great scientist when? In the 13th century. And this is the scientist who discovered and described the circulation of the blood a full four centuries before Harvey did. More important, it was the Arabs and the Muslims who invented the modern empirical method that most textbooks ascribe to Bacon and Descartes and Galileo. Six centuries before Galileo, we have Ibn al-Haytham, al-Hazan as he is known in Latin texts, talking about how one should read science books. 
he rejects the authority of text. In his day, it was the Aristotelian text that after that had problem. He said, he who searches for truth is not he who reviews the works of the ancients. It is he who follows argument and evidence, not the statement by an individual who is inevitably affected by context and imperfection. And then he goes further and he says, it is the duty of he who reads science books, if he wants to learn truth, that he should set himself up as an opponent of all he looks at, accepting only what is supported by evidence and argument. And he describes the modern empirical scientific method. He says, we start by observing reality. We try to select solid, unchanging observations that are not affected by how we perceive or measure them. We then proceed by increasing our research and measurement, subjecting premises to criticism, and being cautious in drawing conclusions. In all we do, our purpose should be balanced, not arbitrary, the search for truth, not the support of opinions. I do not know of a better description of the modern scientific method than that written by Ibn al-Haytham, who flourished at the end of the 10th and the beginning of the 11th century. Now what is more important, I'm talking about the turn of the 10th to the 11th century. He was widely respected in his time. Ibn al-Haytham was not crucified, he was not tried, he was not burnt at the stake, he was not even forced to recant. A full six centuries later, we all know in 1633, Galileo was put on trial for his dialogue of two world systems and had to put his hand and publicly recant and spent the last eight years of his life in his forced residence, was not allowed to leave where he was. Giordano Bruno was burnt alive at the stake. These ideas would take an enormous fight in Europe before the Renaissance became the scientific revolution. And yet at that time, the Muslim societies not only flourished, they helped bring the zero from India and the new numerals that allowed mathematics to flourish. They helped fertilize the world through Andalusia in Europe and, and Sicily. Connections to the rest of the world flourished. Why is that? Because it was an open and tolerant society that was self-confident. And thus, we need to recapture that because we were tolerant not just for science. At the very same time of Ibn al-Haytham, we had Abu al-Ala al-Ma'ari, a blind man who wrote poetry that was so difficult to accept in terms of its challenges to religion. He was widely considered an atheist. In fact, many of us would have difficulty even citing that poetry. But Abu al-Ala, who was a blind man who lived in a small village between Damascus and Halab, Maharat al numan nobody killed him. Even more than that, not only did nobody kill him, his works were known. They arrived all the way down to us today. Nobody banned them. And what is more, people in his time would say, I disagree with his religious views, but I recognize that he is a talented linguist and a brilliant poet. So people could make the distinction between that. That was the society that produced the golden age of Arab and Islamic civilization. And it is a society that we can help recreate today. It is a society that Japan showed that it could recreate in the 19th and 20th century. A society where the sense of security is profound, a society where the discourse can be free of fear and mistrust. And so, laden with past achievements, rich with the promise of future possibilities, we, from both sides of the East, the East to Europe, the close East and the far East, but to ourselves, from two sides of the planet, from two great cultures, 
We conclude this first Japan-Arab conference and we look at the unlimited possibilities that exist before us and think, and not only think and commit ourselves to a follow-up, for we should not just look at things that are unsatisfactory in terms of the conditions of our relationships and ask why is it so. We should look at the kind of relations that we want to build between Japan and the Arabs and ask why not. And with that parting thought, I thank you each and every one for having participated in this conference, and I invite you to join me next door for a beautiful display of Japanese culture. Thank you. So we have Japanese culture next door, Ikebana and Japanese dance. And uh, at, uh, because a number of people want to leave, there will be no uh, event this evening. Everybody can leave after that. We'll have a press conference and a press conference.